Hey everybody, it's Tuesday. I'm Matthew Laria, and you're watching the Faith for Life broadcast. Let's pray and release faith over today's broadcast, and then we're gonna get right into the Word. Father, we do thank you again today, Lord, for your Word. Lord, we ask you today for revelation of it. We ask you today for grace and help to receive it, to put it into practice, and to see it work in our lives, and we do thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, all this week on the broadcast, we're doing a series of teachings entitled, God is for me. And this week on the broadcast, we are feeding your faith so that you get convinced and confident beyond a shadow of a doubt that God is for you. Now, let's go back over to Psalm 56, and let's look there again at verse 9. And the psalmist said there, when I cry unto you, then shall my enemies turn back, for this I know, God is for me. Come on, friends, say that with me again as you're watching the broadcast. This I know, God is for me. Now, what does it mean when we say God is for you? God being for you means that he wants things to go well for you. God being for you means he's for your good. He's for your prosperity. He's for your success. In fact, let's go over to Joshua chapter 1, and we'll look there at verse 8 in Joshua chapter 1. Actually, we're going to start there in verse 5. Joshua chapter 1 and in verse 5, and it says this, God told Joshua, I will be with you. Now, what does that mean? That means I'm for you. I'm with you. Not just I'm with you as I'm present with you, but I'm with you in the sense that I'm for you. Now, look at what else he told Joshua in verse 8. He said, this book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth, but you shall meditate therein day and night that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein, for then you shall make your way prosperous, then you shall have good success. And then verse 9, he says it again, Be not afraid, for the Lord your God is with you whithersoever you go. Now, these two are connected, God being for him, and then God telling him how to prosper and how to have good success. Why? Because God being for you means that he wants things to go well for you. That's what it means when you're prospering. Things are going well for you. And God wants that for us because he is for us. You know, the opposite of God being for us is God being against us. And come on, if you're against someone, then you don't want things to go well for them. You don't want to see them prosper. But when you're for someone, you want to see them prosper and you want to see things go well for them. And so as we're reminding you this week on the broadcast and as we're telling you over and over again, God is for you. What does that mean? It means he wants things to go well for you. Friend, he wants things to go well for you in your life, in your family in your body, in your mind, in your finances. Come on, if you own a business, he wants things to go well for you. This is what it means for him to be for you. You know, in Joshua chapter 5, Joshua saw a man uh, standing with a sword in his hand, and it's actually ended up being an angel. It was the captain of the Lord's army. And God, Joshua asked him this in Joshua 5, verse 14. Joshua said, are you for us or for our adversaries? And come on, friend, what if we ask God right now today? What if we said, God, are you for us or are you against us? Come on, what would the Lord say? He would say, I'm for you. I'm with you. I am on your side. You know, in Psalm 35, verse 27, it says this, Yea, let them say continually, let the Lord be magnified, which has pleasure 
in the prosperity of his servant. God likes it when you and I are doing well. And the reason he does is because he is for us. Now, let's go over to Romans chapter 5. And let's look here at verse 8. Romans chapter 5 and verse 8. And come on, friends, say it with me again as we're flipping over there. God is for me. And let's add this on. Say this. Say, say God wants things to go well for me. Come on, say that again. God wants things to go well for me. Now, in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, it says this, but God commended his love towards us. The word commended means that he demonstrated and proved his love towards us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And so God proved that he was for us when he sent Jesus to die for us. He proved he was for us when he sent Jesus to die for us. You know, before Jesus came, things were not going well for mankind. We were destined to a miserable, wretched, eternal existence in hell. And if God didn't care about us, and if God didn't want things to go well for us, all he had to do was just leave us alone and do nothing. But God wanted to see things go well for mankind. God was for mankind. And he proved that by sending Jesus to die for us to fix our wretched predicament when things weren't going well for us. God made it so that things could go well for us by sending Jesus into the earth. And so that's how you and I know God is for us because when things weren't going well for us, when things were going really bad for us, God stepped in as, and sent Jesus to die for us. You know, in 3 John 2, it says this, Beloved, I wish above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. Now, these are connected. You know, that verse started off by saying, Beloved, and then it talked about him desiring that the one he loves would prosper and be in health. And see, friend, when you love someone, you're for them. And you want to see them prosper. And you want to see things go well for them. And this is how God is with us. God loves us. And he wants to see things go well for us. He wants to see us prosper. And in that verse in Romans 5, 8, when it talked about God commended his love towards us, what was it saying? God loves us. He's for us. He wants things to go well for us. He wants us to prosper. And he proved it when he sent Jesus to die for us. You know, God is for the sinner. God wants things to go well for the sinner. And the first thing that has to happen for that to happen is the sinner has to get saved. The sinner has to get born again. But God's not against the sinner today. He's for the sinner. He wants things to go well for the sinner. He wants the sinner to repent to get born again and to prosper and be in health even as his soul prospers. Now, we need to qualify this. God might not always like what we do, but he is always for us. I want to say it to you again. God might not always like what we, what we do, but he is always for us. You might be watching the broadcast and thinking, yeah, but you don't know what I've done. I've done some bad things in my life or I did something bad yesterday and, and so God's not for me because of all this bad stuff I've done. No, friend, God might not like the stuff you've done and if you've repented, he's actually forgotten the stuff you've done and washed it away by the blood. But he might not always like every decision we make or every choice that we make. 
And if we make a wrong choice, then we need to repent and, 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 and receive forgiveness of it. But the fact remains, God is always for us. Even when He doesn't like what you're doing, He's still for you. You know, you, I've, I've shared with you many times on the broadcast that, that me, my, me and my wife, Amber, we have two daughters. Uh, Grace is eight and, and Faith is five. And already at a young age, you don't always like what they do, but you never stop being for them. And friend, God will never stop being for you. Now let's go over to Exodus chapter 23 in closing today's broadcast. And I want to read you a verse over there in Exodus chapter 23. And say it with me again, friend. God is for me and he wants things to go well for me. Say that again. God is for me and he wants things to go well for me. In Exodus chapter 23, verse 22, it says this, If you obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto your enemies and an adversary unto your adversaries. Friend, because God is for you, he is against anything that is against you. I want to say it to you again. Because God is for you, He is against anything that comes against you. What did that verse say? The Lord said, I'm going to be an enemy to your enemies. I'm going to be an adversary to your adversaries. Why? Because I'm for you and I want things to go well for you and anything that's against you and anything that's against things going well for you, the Lord's saying, I'm against. See, anything that threatens my prosperity, anything that threatens my safety, anything that threatens my well-being, God is against it because He is for me. I need to say that to you again. Anything that threatens my safety, my prosperity, my well-being, God is against it because He is for me. And see, this is a big reason why God is against sin. Because sin, when you yield to it, and when you live a lifestyle of sin, and you don't repent, it threatens your safety. It threatens your prosperity. It threatens your well-being. It opens the door to the enemy in your life to bring destruction in your life. And that's why God is against sin. He's against sin because sin will hurt you and he is for you. You know, in Genesis chapter 12, in verse 3, God told Abraham, I'll curse those that curse you. Well, why God? Why would you curse those that curse me? Because I am for you. And friend, God being for you, means that He is for your good, He's for your prosperity, He's for your success, He wants things to go well for you. And anything that threatens your prosperity, that threatens your well-being, He is against it. This is good news, isn't it? Now, as we're closing today's broadcast, friend, I want to remind you of these three things. Number one, God being for you means that He wants things to go well for you. It means He's for your good. He's for your prosperity. He's for your success. Number two, God proved that He is for us by sending Jesus to die for us. And then number three, anything that is against me, anything that threatens my prosperity, my safety, my well-being, God is against. Let's pray. Father, Lord, we thank you for helping us get rooted in this reality that you are for us. And Lord, we are so thankful today that you're for us and that you're for our prosperity, you're for our success, you're for our good, and you want to see things go well for us. Lord, we rejoice in it and we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Friend, thank you so much for watching today's broadcast. Now, hey, don't forget to come back tomorrow for Wednesday's edition of our Faith for Life broadcast. And we're going to continue this series entitled, God is for me. We'll see you then.